Welcome back to the Jongus Games playthrough for Keyflow. At this moment, we have completed one quarter of the game, and we are about to jump into the summer season. And if you have not seen the first video where I teach all of the rules to the game and I go through spring, then please click the link for it down below in the description or the eye up in the top corner. Now, just like before, I would like to ask that you please make sure your Klingon subtitles are turned on. That way, if I make any mistakes while I am playing, I can then put corrections on the screen and you should be able to see them. All right, let's jump back into the game. All right, let's pick things up at the start of the summer season, and we have seven cards in our hand, and we get to pick one of them. Now, at first glance, it looks like there are three of these village cards here. Two of them are going to provide animals and resources and uh, these skill tiles, and then over here, we do have one boat. Now, this flipper says that if we were to build this out, then every time for the rest of the game, whenever we flip over one of these upgrades to its victory point side, we would also generate one gold and put it down onto that same card. Now, gold is nice because it's a wild resource, and at the end of the game, if you have uh, nothing else going on for that gold, it's going to be worth one point at the end of the game. Now, because of that, I think this is a pretty attractive card, especially considering we already have two of those upgrades, and we're hoping to do some more upgrades and flips in the future. Now, gaining uh, these would certainly be nice, and I guess uh, these keeples are pretty good too. This is a triple keeple card, and we know that within our hand, there is going to be a scoring card that's going to give three points each for every one of these triple meeple cards that the person with the apothecary has in their area. So that's something to keep in mind. But at the end of the day, I just really like the idea of having the flipper. So I figure let's go ahead and choose this card, and now we can pass the remaining cards counterclockwise to the green player. Once we've all selected, we can then flip over our cards and activate them. We will start with ourselves here, and we know that we have this flipper, and we can now add it onto our riverfront. And I think we should put it right over here. The reason for that is because this boat right here does not actually generate resources, and it is now um, between our two cards up top that have already been upgraded. So this is not a particularly lucrative spot to try and create resources and move them on, so I think snugging that in right over here is going to be for the best. At the same time we were taking our action, green was going, and they've decided to place this key flower. Now this is another one of those boats that gives an ongoing ability for the rest of the game, and this one is quite powerful. It says that for the rest of the game, the green player can now treat all of their colored resources within an upgrade as if they were white. Now again, a white resource is just any of the resources, so by putting this right down over here, they could now upgrade, for instance, this for just two of any resources instead of needing it to specifically be an iron and a stone. This is particularly potent when paired with the green player's ability to do multiple upgrades right at once, and they are definitely hoping to leverage that. Lastly, the blue player was also playing at the same time, and they decided to put this farrier down into play. Now, this is essentially just an upgraded version of our home cards here. It starts off with three movement and a single upgrade, and once this gets um, upgraded, it is five resource movements and then one upgrade action, and they've decided to put this down right over here. All right, we can all simultaneously pick up our hands of six cards and choose one of these remaining. And it looks like there are a lot of keyboard cards in our hand. Now, two of these are village cards. This hiring fair right here allows you to get rid of one skill tile, of any skill tile that is, and it would generate two random ones. And if you upgrade it, it is one into three. So this is a really powerful way to just multiply the number of skill tiles you have, especially if you have some way to turn those maybe into points. Now, this one right here is pretty simple. It just gives an anvil, a iron, and one pig. And then beyond that, we have a bunch of these keeple cards in our hand. Uh, this one is pretty interesting. It has to be played within your own village. And then once you place this down as a benefit, you will get one Keeple token. Now you could use that Keeple token right away to turn this effectively into a three, or you could save that Keeple token. And this does seem pretty nice, although we already have a way to generate Keeple tokens. Now with that in mind, I think maybe what we should do is play this card here. And the reason for that is because I like the idea of using the blue player's uh, workshop, and they are currently to the left of us. Well, I guess they will always be to the left of us in this game, so we need to place a keeple with a left arrow. We've got this one here, and then we also have this one, but this also gifts two of these sheep to the player who takes this. So I figure let's make them work for it if they want those sheep, and we'll use this one to activate their building. Once we've all made our selections, we can reveal these, and we know that we want to play this one down onto the blue player's workshop. That's going to generate an iron, a stone, and a wood, and all of these will go down onto our home tile because these were made in another player's village. Once we have these, we could potentially transport them over there to try and get this upgraded and start leveraging that benefit for us, so I like this turn. Meanwhile, the green player was also activating, and they decided to use this keeple card, and they're going to send it over to the left. 
This means it's going to come into our village up here, and they've decided to activate our key mine. Now that's going to make three iron for them because this is upgraded. And these will then go down onto their home card. Lastly, we have the blue player, and they've decided to put this brewer into their village. Now, when activated, this allows a player to get rid of any skill token, and they will then take a gold and one of those keeple tokens, and when it's upgraded, it turns into two gold and one keeple token. Now, they've decided to put this one right over here to the left of their home card. All right, let's move on, and everybody can look at their new hand of cards. We've got a few keeple cards and a couple village cards here. This one has three sheep on it, and it comes with a pickaxe, skill token, and a stone, and this one allows you to spend pickaxes to get four stone, and once it's upgraded, that pickaxe just turns it into three gold. Uh, that's also five points, which is pretty good, although I'm not sure if we necessarily need either of these right now, so instead, we'll probably be grabbing one of these keeple cards. And I figure let's just pick up this one. It's a triple keeple card, and we could potentially score points for this if we end up taking the card from our uh, winter deck for these triples. And that also means that our opponents won't have access to this triple later on in the round. Uh, so yeah, let's go with uh, that one there, and we can then pass these over to the green player. And then once all of us have picked our cards, we can all simultaneously reveal and activate them. Well, I think the best thing for us is to go right over here. That will allow us to do three movements and then one upgrade. And with these, we could move this one iron once over here, and that's going to give us two movements left. And then we could use this wood to go once, and we have one movement left, which will move this wood right over there. Now with that, we can now do the upgrade, and that allows us to upgrade this alehouse. So now we can put this here. That's generated one point for us at the end of the game. And whenever anyone activates this, it will now generate a keeple token and a random skill token. We, of course, have to get rid of these here, and that means we now have three of these tokens that can be flipped with an upgrade action in the future. And we, of course, get bonus gold because of our flipper ship. Down here, the green player decided to play this card, which is going to generate one of those keeple tokens. And they're going to put this one right over here onto their home card. Now they can take that Keeple token right away and put it into their supply, and now this will allow them to move up to three of the resources, and then they can do an upgrade. It looks like they've decided to do three movement, moving all three of these iron over here to this gold mine, and then they can upgrade this gold mine. Now you'll see it has an iron and a stone as a requirement, but remember they have the key flower boat. That means all of these resources are effectively white, which means they could be any resource of your choice. So the green player is just going to get rid of two of these iron, and that will allow them to upgrade their gold mine. That means they have just generated three points for themselves at the end of the game. And whenever this gold mine is activated for the rest of the game, it will generate two gold instead of the one gold it did previous. Lastly, the blue player decided they were going to play this double keeple card with one uh, sheep on it, and they're going to put it down onto their own workshop. Now they can do that because this is two keeples onto the one card that had been played, and that means they will immediately generate the iron, stone, and wood on this location. And this also means that this workshop can only be activated one more time in this season, and that card would require three keeples on it in order to make it happen. Alright, we can now all pick up our remaining four cards and make a pick. It appears there are a couple keeple cards in here and then a couple river cards. Now these are pretty nice. They give skill tokens as well as resources. And then over here for these keeple cards, well, I'm pretty tempted actually to grab this one. The reason for that is because this can go in any direction. And I like the idea of setting this over to the right to the green player's area because we know that they have this builder which allows you to do one movement and then do two upgrades. Now with those two upgrades, we could flip over two of our tokens and every token that gets flipped will generate one gold which we could use as a wild resource in the future or of course just use as one point at the end of the game. That seems pretty good, and I think the other uh, nice option we could do on our turn, I suppose, is we could choose this. That would lock down another one of these triple keeble cards right here, and we could use this to activate any of these, including this alehouse. I suppose the alehouse is a pretty good idea. That would give us one keeple token, and it would also give us a random skill token, and it's likely we'll have a chance maybe to activate that builder later on in this season. So, yeah, I've changed my mind. Let's go with that. So we're going to pass these over to the green player. Now that we've all made our decisions, we can reveal these. And as I was saying before, I figure let's put this card down right over here onto the alehouse. That's upgraded, which means we can take one of these keeple tokens, and we now get a random skill. And we'll take that out of this pile, so I figure we'll take maybe this one here, and we found a saw. We can add this over here into our area. Down here, the green player is also activating at the same time, and they decided to send this over here to their builder. Now that's going to allow them to move one of their resources, and they're going to pick up this iron here and move it to the builder, and then they get two upgrades. 
Now with the first of these upgrades, they have planned on discarding this white here, which is going to upgrade their woodcutter. So they could put this right here, and that's generated three points for them at the end of the game. And now when they activate this, it's going to make a wood and a wild gold resource. And then with the other one of their upgrades, they're just going to flip one of their upgrade tokens over, and they're just going to do this woodcutter right here. So that's generated another point for them at the end of the game. And then up here, the blue player decided they want to play this hiring fair. Now they're going to put that right over here, and we can see that they already have some of these skill tokens, and when they combine that potentially with their brewer, they could make a lot of skill tokens and then turn those into keeple tokens as well as gold. So that's a pretty nice little system over here for the blue player. Let's now move on by picking up some new cards here, and I think... Oh man, that's unfortunate. So I was hoping that we could do that double upgrade with the green player, but as you can see, we don't have any right hand arrows. We could play this onto the blue player's area, or we could just choose this one and put it down into our own. I suppose if we're doing that, then we are leaning harder and harder into trying to make use out of this uh, path carry right here. Uh, every one of those cards in our area would be worth three points to us if we have this built out into our village. So it's looking like we might have a few really good options for us at the start of the uh, winter season but either way i think that's probably going to be the best thing for us we already have two of these so we may as well lean into it a little bit more and there are some pretty good stuff we could do in our area we could just activate our key mine here to get three more iron and of course we could also just activate our alehouse again to get even more of these tokens all right we've all made our selections so now we can start revealing and playing these cards and I figure let's go ahead and put this right down over there and that's going to get us another keeple token and another wild skill token so let's come over to the pile and we'll take this one here, and that's an anvil, which we can add over here into our supply. Down here, the green player has decided to place this card and they're going to put it into their own village and they're going to activate their woodcutter. That's going to get them a single wood and a gold, which go down onto the card. And then up here, the blue player decides they want to play a mason. So they've been doing a lot of village expansion in this season. They haven't really been playing that many cards. And this one will allow them the ability to spend pickaxes to get a whole bunch of stone. And if they upgrade it, then that's just going to turn into a lot of gold. So they can add this over here. And they like the idea of that because they already have a pretty good infrastructure made up for creating more of these skill tokens. At this point, we can all pick up our two remaining cards, and I think this is pretty straightforward for us. We talked about trying to activate that builder to get two upgrades, and this can only be played on opponents. Now, that builder already has one card on it, but this has two keeples, which means that is more than the one card, and that means this would be able to activate that builder. So let's go ahead and pick this, and then we can pass this over to the green player. And then once we've all made our selections, we can play. Now, we know that we want to put this down onto the builder, but the green player also wants to play this down onto the builder. Now, fortunately, we can play along just fine, because if you remember, whenever you activate a building, you activate it like it was at the start of the round. So at the start of the round, for each of us, there was just a single card, which means both of these cards are bigger than that single card, and these can both go down just like this, and that means each of us will get this activation. So let's go ahead and take care of ours first, and this will let us move one resource and then do two upgrades. And I figure we can move this iron over here to the left and hopefully use it to upgrade something out here that we can build in the future. And then with those two upgrades, I figure let's flip over both of these. That's going to get us two points right there. And then this flipper is going to generate one gold on every single one of these flipped tiles. So we can put a gold right here and a gold right over there. At the same time, the green player was also activating their builder, and that's going to let them move one resource, and they'll pull this wood over here onto the builder, and then they can do the two upgrades. This first upgrade is going to be for the builder. Uh, again, all of the resource colors are white for the green player for the rest of the game, so they can get rid of both of these, although it looks like that would have been fine anyway. This was a wood and then a white resource anyway. So those are gone, and they can now bring out this upgrade tile and put that down right here, and then they get one more upgrade. In this case, they are just going to flip over something, and it'll be this one right here, so that generates them another point. And then, of course, they get a point at the end of the game for this upgrade on the builder. Up here, the blue player is also taking their turn, and they've decided to put this river card down just like that. You can have uh, open holes like this, that's no problem. And they have now made a pig for the end of the game. They will get a random token, and it looks like that's going to be an anvil. And then they will also get one gold, which is going to go right down onto this field. At this point, we all have just one card left for the summer, and that means we can just reveal them and play them. Now, this is a single cow in a river field, and that's going to bring one saw and one wood resource. Now, we could discard this to get one more of these keeple tokens, but we already have two of them. So I think let's just go ahead and keep this around. We can add it right down here, and that means we now have a saw, and we get this one wood. 
Now, the reason we're putting this here is because we're not really sure what's going to get placed up there, but we're hoping to put something down that requires a wood for upgrading. Uh, we've got quite a few skill tokens now, so we are probably going to be looking for ways to liquidate these into points. Although, again, we know in our back pocket that this key thedral also exists, which is a really nice way to get rid of six of your skill tokens in order to get 20 points out of them. So, uh, definitely a decent thing to keep in mind. Down here, the green player is also taking their last turn of the season, and they've found three sheep here. They're just going to put it down here as a field. That's going to get them one of these pickaxe skill tokens, and that also means they will get a stone. And then lastly, at the same time, the blue player is going, and they got another one of these pigs. Now, they don't really want to use this card. They've decided to discard it, and that's going to get them one of these keeple tokens. And with that, we've now reached the end of this season. Now, before we move on to the fall, we could all use our keeple tokens, and you can only use them within your own personal village. So let's go ahead and start with us. And I figure, let's go ahead and use one of these. Again, they act as if they were a two keeple card, and we can put this right over here on top of this one card there. So two is bigger than the one, and that lets us activate this, which is going to bring three iron out. And, you know, I figure, let's go ahead and use this one as well. We can activate our home once again because there's one card on it, and this is effectively a double keeple card. And with that, we can now move three of these resources. Now, we've got three over here and two over there, so I figure we'll just send these two here, and this one over there just uh, being proactive for whatever upgrades we might want to do out here. And then, of course, remember that, once again, we could potentially turn these uh, irons into a lot of points at the end of the game. Now, I keep talking about multiple cards, but I have to remember that we are only guaranteed to get one of these at the start of the winter phase. After moving these resources around, we get one upgrade action, so let's go ahead and flip over this key mine, and then again our flipper ability will come into play, which will put one gold right there onto the mine. Once we've decided we're done playing our keeple tokens, or of course if we run out of all of them, we can end out this phase, so we can just discard these right here, and then of course these will get discarded down beneath our storage card, and we could use these potentially for victory points at the end of the game. Let's now move down to the green player, and they've decided to use this keeple token right over here. That's going to activate their gold mine, and that will generate two gold, which will go right down on top of the mine, and that is it for their keeple tokens. So they can now discard all of this, and then put these down underneath their storage card. And then lastly, the blue player will go up here. Now they're going to use this keeple token over on their brewer, and then that will allow them to get rid of one of their skill tokens, and that will generate one gold, and it will generate a keeple token. So they can add this into their supply, and now they're going to use this one over at their hiring fair. Now once here, they're going to get rid of this anvil, and that will turn into two random skill tokens which they can draw from the pile, and it looks like they have found a pickaxe and a saw. They really like the look of that pickaxe because they have this mason here, and they are planning on using that in the next round. That finishes out their optional keeple actions, so they can discard these, and they only have two cards that they're putting down underneath their storage card this season. Alright, the summer season is officially over, and we can now move into the fall, and that means we will deal out this entire deck to the players. And we can now pick these up, and as I mentioned before, there are now 8 cards in this season, and there will be 9 cards in the winter season when we get there. Alright, let's start fall off by looking at the hand of cards that we have. Now there are quite a few village cards over here, just 2 of these keeple cards, so let's see what our options are. This first one is pretty simple, it's the river, it has a cow on it, and an anvil, and an iron. This one right here is the peddler. Now that one gives you two resource movements, and it lets you generate a uh, one of those keeple tokens, which is pretty interesting, although we already have a decent way of generating those. Uh, that's a really good way to move resources around, though. Uh, this one right here is the barn, and this is a new type of card. Now you'll notice this is a river card, which means it goes down below, and it has this kind of uh, rounded edge to the rectangle in the middle. Now this is a new way to score points at the end of the game. What this means is every single one of any color resource within the barn is going to be worth one point at the end of the game. Remember, as it stands with no other modifiers, you don't get any points for your iron, your stone, or your wood. You only get one point for each gold at the end of the game. But every iron, wood, or stone within our barn would be worth one point. And if we upgraded this by getting rid of any of our skill tokens, then every single one of these resources would be worth two points each. Now that's actually pretty good, and I like the idea of putting that right underneath our key mine. We could just keep mining up the iron and then shoving it down into our barn to get a bunch of points for it. So that is certainly very uh, attractive to me. 
Uh, moving on, we have the Wainwright, and this one is pretty good as well. Uh, that would allow us to do two upgrades, and it moves resources very swiftly. And again, we like doing those upgrades because of this flipper here, although at the moment we've run out of flip options. Uh, we're going to need to get some more of these buildings up here to upgrade and then flip over to keep using that as a benefit. Uh, this well is pretty interesting. It's just a way to use a bunch of your uh, resource variety. You can get three points at the end of the game for playing it, and then if you upgrade it by spending one of each resource, it becomes 10. If you do it again, it becomes a 20. So it's kind of like that cathedral that we have in the winter deck, but we can start playing towards it here in the fall. Uh, next up, we have another one of these cows, and I guess that is it for the variety. Now, there's some good stuff in here, and then there's another one of these triple uh, keeple cards, and we already have a few of those within our storage card. So uh, we're definitely gunning towards that condition as well. There's just so many things to consider, but I really like the idea of this barn right underneath our key mine. So I think this is going to be the card we pick. Now that we are in the fall, you'll notice we are passing clockwise again, so that means we can give these cards over to the blue player. We have all now made our picks so we can reveal these cards. And our activation is pretty simple. We're just going to tuck this one right down underneath our key mine. At the same time, the green player is playing their card, and they have a goldsmith. Now, they already have a gold mine, which makes gold very well, and this allows them to upgrade using gold. But remember, they actually have this key flower, which allows them to upgrade this using any resources of their choice. So instead of actually using gold, they're planning on using some other stuff, and they're going to put this one right down over here next to the woodcutter. Uh, they do make gold here at the woodcutter, but they figure they'll use the wood to move over and make this goldsmith worth even more points. Lastly, the blue player can go at the same time, and they have revealed a stone yard. Now, this is much like the barn that we just took. It's going to be worth points at the end of the game for certain conditions within this card, and you'll see that for every one of their stone and gold they have over here, for every pair, they will get five points, and if they upgrade this by getting rid of one of their pickaxes, then they will get five points for every stone and every iron that is hanging out over here on the stone yard, and they've decided they're going to put this one right over here. Okay, we can all simultaneously pick up our hand of cards again, and in this hand there are a few keeple cards. Uh, there's also a couple of these river cards. That is four sheep, and then a couple pigs over here, but I think we are much more interested in starting to play these keeple cards out. Now, first things first, we do notice that there is one of these triples here. Uh, there are some pigs and some sheep going on over there, but uh, we've gone so hard with these triples so far, I figure maybe let's just keep doing that. So we can choose this card right here and use it to activate any of these three options. And I think, realistically, all three of these work out pretty well, although this is probably going to be the one we do to start moving some of these resources around and then continuing to get upgrades going. We've now all made our choices, so we can start activating these cards. And I figure let's just send this over to our home card, and then we can take three of these irons and send them right down here into the barn. That's the three movement we have, and then we have an upgrade, and let's get rid of one of these saws right here, and that will let us upgrade this down here. So now, instead of being one point each, everything in here is worth two points each at the end of the game. Meanwhile, the green player was activating their card, and they decided to put this onto their woodcutter. Now when they place this, this is going to generate one of these keeple tokens for them, and then when they activate this, that will give them one wood, and then one gold that goes right down onto the woodcutter. Next up, the blue player is also taking their turn, and they decided to use this triple keeple card, and they're going to go onto their farrier. That's going to give them three movements, and they've decided to send this up here for one. Uh, this is going to go over here for two. And then for their third, they're going to move this iron right over there, and then they're going to do an upgrade, and they're going to upgrade the farrier. Now that's going to cost them one of their stone and then one other resource, and they've decided to get rid of this iron which allows them to put this right over here, and now that's worth three points to them at the end of the game, and whenever this gets activated, it now moves five resources instead of the three that it moved before. All right, let's move on, and it looks like there are just a bunch of these keeble cards in this hand. Now, the first thing that jumps out to me is there is one of these, which gives a keeple token, and there's another one of these, which are the triple uh, keeple cards, which we could get so many points for. At this point, we are getting so many of these if we use this, uh, specifically in our area, then I think that Apothecary is probably going to be the card that we actually end up going with, because it's just going to be worth so many points to us. Now, this is pretty nice as well, because it gives one of these keeple tokens, but we know that we could get those by activating our alehouse, and it's very likely we'll end up doing that at some point soon. So I think let's just go with this one and probably use it to activate our key mine. 
And now that we've all picked out, we can start revealing these cards and we'll begin with ourselves like normal. And I think let's just send this over here to the key mine. That's going to generate three iron right on that location. And we have now set ourselves up to easily be able to shunt those over here into the barn with a future home card activation. At the same time, we were taking our turn, the green players going, and they decided to play this peddler. That's going to get them to uh, the resource movements, and it also generates one of those people tokens. And they're going to put this one right over there. Lastly, the blue player is next, and they've decided to send this double keeple card over to their mason. Now, once here, they're going to get rid of one of their pickaxes, and that will generate four stone. They can add these right on top of that card. And this means we can now move on and draw a new card from this hand of five. Now, it looks like there is just one keeple card in here, and there's quite a few of these uh, uh, village cards. Three of these are river cards. This well right here is a really good way to uh, turn resources into points. Now, we don't necessarily make a variety of resources like that. And uh, part of me feels like we should grab this Wainwright. I'm not really sure. I mean, we've done a lot of upgrades already. We have just one more left over here, and this allows for a double upgrade action. But it also allows us to uh, the ability to move our resources around much more quickly. Now, this takes two of any resources, which means we could also use this to upgrade itself and get some more points. We can see it's three points if we upgrade into this. And the other alternatives are, they're just okay. I mean, this well is decent, I suppose, but we have to move the resources around onto it. And we are already trying to focus a lot of resources on the barn. So I think what we should probably do is go with this Wayne right here. And now that we've all made our decisions, we can reveal these cards. So we can add this Wainwright down, and I figure let's put him right over there, considering we have a lot of resources on that spot. Down here, the green player decided to play this single keeple card, and they would like to activate their woodcutter again. Now, they have to have more keeples showing than the number of cards that have been played already, and that means they've decided to use this keeple token alongside this one. So that is now effectively a three, and they can put this over here. That's going to activate this, and that will put one gold down on top of the woodcutter, and it will put another wood onto that spot. And then up here, the blue player decided to put a two keeble card down, and they're going to cover up this single card right here. Now, once they do that, they can activate this and do five movement and then one upgrade. And they're going to go one, two, three, four, and then over here, they will bring this one down for the fifth. When they upgrade, they're going to do this hiring fair, and that means they can spend the wood and the stone. And that is going to allow them the ability in the future of going here to get rid of one of their tokens to get three of the skill tokens back instead of the two. All right, we can now all pick up our cards and there are four remaining. And it looks like a couple of these are river cards and then two of these are the keeple cards. Now, I think that we're not terribly interested in pigs or the sheep right now. Uh, they do come with a couple resources, but I do like the idea of using these instead. I suppose if we uh, took this keeple card and then activated our alehouse with it, that would give us the ability to take one of those uh, keeple tokens. And then we could use that near the end of the round if we wanted to. Uh, that seems relatively good, I suppose, although I would rather probably activate either of these. Although we could use this on our new Wayne right here. That would let us move some resources around and potentially even get our Wainwright uh, upgraded. I think either of these are pretty good, so let's go ahead and pick this card here. And then once we've all chosen, we can reveal, and I think at this point, let's actually go with the Wainwright. This is going to give us three movement and then two upgrades, and I figure let's move this over here for one, and then that'll be two, and that way we have enough stuff to upgrade the Wainwright themselves, and then we have one more movement left over, and I suppose we should just take this iron and then move it down into the barn. Now let's do two upgrades, and the first one can be for the Wainwright, so we can get rid of these two resources because it just needs white resources, which is any of the resource types. So we can add this right on there, and we have now generated three points for the end of the game. And if we activate this more in the future, we get five movement, which is great. And then we can flip over one of these, and I figure let's flip this over. That's going to put one gold down onto that spot. And interestingly enough, the gold is worth one point at the end of the game. But if it's down here on this upgraded barn, then it's actually worth two points. So that's slightly better. At the same time, all of that is happening. The green player decided they want to put this down onto their builder. Now that is going to generate one of these keeple tokens. Uh, we're kind of bummed. We keep seeing our opponents grab these when uh, we could potentially get them later on. But they're denying them from us. And now they can activate their builder. Now that gives them three movement and then two upgrades. They've decided to send these two things right over here to the goldsmith. And then this one stone down here will go up to the peddler. 
Now they will do the upgrades. And remember, they have this key flower ship that says that every one of the resources within one of their upgrade arrows is white instead of the resource that it is supposed to be. So that means they can upgrade this goldsmith for two of these wood instead of the gold that it was supposed to be. So they can put this right here, and they've gone from zero to seven points on this card right here. And then over here, they can do the same thing with this peddler. Normally that would need to be a gold, but this key flower makes it a white. So they can get rid of the stone right here, and that allows them the ability to upgrade this, which will generate them one more point. Up here, we now have the blue player, and they're going to put the single keeple down onto their hiring fair. Now over here, they have the ability to get rid of one of their skill tokens, and they can then draw three more random ones. So they'll grab three more back, and it looks like they actually found one of each. They were hoping to see more of these axes, but they figure they have other ways to turn these skill tokens into things they like. Okay, let's keep moving on, and we have three cards left in front of ourselves. It looks like all three of these are keeple cards, and none of them can actually go down into our own area. Uh, this one could go to the green player, this one can go to the blue player, and this one could go to either of those players. Now, when you play this one out, you do get the keeple token. It's not like you were gifting that token over to your opponent. So I suppose we need to figure out what we need from our opponents. Well, I figure right now we have more skill tokens than we need, so we could go up to the Brewer and get a uh, Keeple token and a Gold out of that. Or instead, we could come down here and just take two Gold. I think given those two options, I like the idea of going towards green better. And it's currently empty, so we could use just a single Keeple. So let's go ahead and pick this card here. So now that we've all made our picks, we can reveal, and we know that we're going to send this one over to the Gold Mine. That card's going to get us one Keeple token, and it will also generate two gold for us, which we can then put down onto our home tile. Down here, the green player decided to put this river card into play, and they'll put it right over here underneath the woodcutter and the goldsmith. That's going to get them one random skill tile, and they found a saw, and that's also going to get them a gold. Up here, the blue player decided to play this card, which has to go down onto the green player, because that is the player to their left and they've decided to put it onto the green player's home card. That's going to get the blue player three resource movement and one upgrade. And they've decided to go one, two, and then three. Now, over here, they're going to do their upgrade. They have a stone, and then they need a wood, but the gold acts as a wild, so they can get rid of both of these, which is going to upgrade their brewer. So now when this is activated, it generates two gold and one keeple token. Let's go ahead and move on, and we have two cards left over, and it looks like neither of these are keeple cards. Now, this one is a cow, and it would let us get an anvil as well as an iron, but we certainly don't really need iron right now. And this one is a well. Now, this one goes down on the river, and it's another way to turn resources into points. In this case, we could use um, two sets of the three different types to try and make that happen. Now we have a decent amount of gold, which we uh, could use that to try and make up the types that we don't necessarily have. So I think let's go with this well. Okay, we've all made our decisions, so we can flip this over, and I think let's put our well down right next to our barn. And then down here, the green player decided to put this river card right there next to their cow. Now that's going to get them one saw, and that's going to get them one wood. And lastly, the blue player is going to play onto the green player's area once again. Now I just realized that last turn the blue player put this card down and they did forget to take their keeple token for it, so we will give that to them, and then this card will give them another keeple token, and then when they activate this area, that's going to get the blue player a third keeple token right here, or I guess technically they only should have gotten two this turn, and then they also get four resource movements. When we come back up here, they actually only have three movements they want to do. That's going to be both of these stone right down here, and then this gold will also go into their stone yard. All right, we've reached the final card of Autumn, so we can flip this over and deal with it. And I'm not sure what we should do here. Now, this would get us one pickaxe and one stone. And I suppose if we put that right over here, we could use that stone to help construct our well. Now, we could, of course, just discard this one and get another Keeple token and use that to get some more activations up here. But I guess it is a good idea to try and get that stone while, uh, while we can. It's nice and close over here, and there's another stone over there. So that would be the two stone that we need to actually finish out this well. So, yeah, let's go ahead and put this right down here. And that's going to come with a stone on it and one pickaxe. Down here, the green player reveals this double Keeple card, and it has to go to either one of their opponents. And they've decided to send this over to the blue player. Now, once they look over their options, they like the Brewer. Now, that means the green player has to get rid of one of their skill tokens, but they will then take a Keeple token and two gold. 
So this two gold will come right down onto their home because it was made in another village, and they have quite a bit of gold going on in their village right now. Uh, they, of course, have to get rid of one of their skill tokens, so they'll get rid of this one right here, and then that will make one more keeple token for themselves. Lastly, up here, the blue player reveals this card, and they've decided just to discard it, and they're going to take another keeple token. So they have four of these going into the end of the season. Well, speaking of the end of the season, we are now there, and we can now all optionally spend our Keeple tokens within our own village. Now, I figure let's spend this one right over here. Uh, there's really no reason not to, because that will get us one more of these Keeple tokens, and it's going to get us one random skill token. So we can flip this over, and we found a pickaxe, and now we still have one of these left over, and I figure maybe we should just go over to our key mine. Uh, that will generate three more iron, and we can just keep dumping that down over here, although instead we could also consider something along the lines of uh, our Wainwright or our home. That would let us move some of these other materials over, perhaps give us the option to start upgrading in the well, and we could use some of this gold to make that happen. Now we could also try to get some wood to make the well happen, but I figure maybe this is a better plan. Let's send this right over here to the Wainwright. Again, we can do that because there's just one card over here at the moment, and now we have five resources that we can move. So I figure let's start by moving this over here for one. Next up, we can bring this iron over here for two, and that gold will go down there for three. Uh, we can bring another iron over here for four, and then with the fifth move, I suppose let's go ahead and move this stone to just get it closer over here to the well. We are pulling resources out of the barn, I suppose, but it's next to this other stuff, and we have lots of good ways to just shunt stuff down into the barn anyway. So I think that's going to work out pretty well for us, and now we can do two upgrades. So this top one can happen. We've got a stone, an iron, and a gold, which acts as a wood. So those are all gone, and we can now add this here. So we've just generated seven points, going from three up to ten. And then with our other upgrade, I figure let's just flip this over, and that will generate one gold on that spot due to our flipper ship. And then we could potentially use this gold as another one of the required wood to keep these upgrades going. Well, that's going to finish out our keeple tokens, so we can discard these. And then all of these cards will go underneath our storage card. Next up, we have the green player, and they have two of these tokens, and they've just decided to spend one of them over here on the gold mine. That's pretty simple. It's just going to generate two gold, which will go right down on their gold mine, and they're going to keep this keeple token for the next and final season of the round. So they can now discard this, and then all of these keeple cards will go underneath their storage card. And then up here, the blue player has four of these keeple tokens. Now they'll start by using this one over here on their hiring fair. They will discard this anvil, and that will let them pick up three more random skill tokens. And it looks like they have found two pickaxes and another anvil, so they can add these into their supply, and they have three more of these tokens here, and they're going to use this one over on their brewer. That's going to generate another token, which they can add right into their supply, and that will make two gold. They can add these right over here onto the brewer, and they are going to keep going because they can spend this keeple token as a uh, two keeple card over here on the mason. Now that lets them get rid of one of their numerous pickaxes over here, and that will generate four more stone on the mason. And then after they do that, they're going to spend one of these keeple tokens on their home card. That's going to give them the ability to move one resource, and then they could do one upgrade. And with that upgrade, uh, with that resource move, they've decided to take this gold and bring it right down here. And then with the upgrade, they're going to spend two stone right here off of the mason. And that means for the future, they will immediately generate five points for the end of the game. And then, of course, whenever they get rid of the pickaxes, they will now make gold instead of stone. We can see that when they cover this up right here. And then at this point, they're not going to use this last keeple token. They're just going to leave it over here for the final round. So with that in mind, they can now discard all of these tokens right here. And then all of these cards can go underneath their storage card. All right, the fall is now officially over, so we can now move into the winter. But before we can deal out all of these cards, we have a special draft that we do. Now, everyone's been looking at these five winter cards all game long, and it's now time for us to choose one of these and immediately build it out into our village. And then the other four cards will be shuffled up with all of these cards here. And if you'll notice, these are all of the various keeple cards that will be available in the last round. And then we will deal this out to each one of the players evenly. So let's once again look through these and make our pick. Now we've been keeping our eye on these all game long, just kind of keeping it in mind as far as things we want to do for points. And this first one, this store, is the main reason we got this key mine fully upgraded early. 
Now, at that point, we didn't realize we were going to get a barn, and this barn is a really good way to turn our iron and, well, any of the resources into points. And remember, every resource token and every card can only be used towards one different scoring condition. So if we use this to get three points for two iron, we cannot use those iron over here in the barn. So I don't think this actually makes much sense for us, although I do suppose we have one anvil to get three points over there. But we could also use these skill tokens to get a bunch of points with this cathedral. Now we have four skill tokens right now, and this would cost us six skill tokens overall to upgrade, and that would be worth 20 points, so that is certainly something to consider. Uh, this Apothecary is going to be worth three points for every one of those triple keeple cards that you have, and at this point, since we are between seasons, we can take a look at our hand. So you can see here we have one, two, three, four, five of these, and that means that uh, this card right now is currently worth three times five, or 15 points. So that's almost the 20 that we'd get for the Cathedral without even discarding anything. So that's certainly pretty good, and then we can move on here, and this one will get us uh, points for the cows. Now, right now, we have one cow out here, and then inside our storage, we have, it looks like, one more cow? No, two more cows. So we have three cows total. Now, that means if we played this carried away, it would currently be worth 10 points, and if we were able to get two more cows to go towards the scoring condition, we would get 10 more points, so that's also pretty great. And then finally, this is worth two points for every green keeple that we have in our storage. Well, if we look back here, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five. So that means this card would be worth 10 points, which is certainly less than the maximum that we see with some of these other ones. Realistically, I think these four are the strongest, and in particular, I think these two are the strongest right here. Now, I like the idea of going with the Apothecary. We have 15 points in that already, but remember, we also have this Flipper. Now, if we put upgrade tiles on this Cathedral, we can then upgrade them to get even more points, and then if we flip those upgrades over, we get uh, gold, which is also worth more points. So I think this is probably better, and honestly, we've been taking so many of these triple keeple cards that it's possible that this card might float back around to us. Uh, this is going to get shuffled in, and it might even be in our first draw, and we could just take it before our opponents have any shot. So I think I've made my decision. Let's go with the Cathedral here. We now have to add this down into our area, and I figure we'll put it right here, and then the rest of these cards will get shuffled up with the rest of the deck. But of course, before we shuffle up the Winter cards, our opponents also have to do this draft. Now, the green player decides they want to put this Traveler's Lodge out. This is going to be worth one point uh, for each one of their carrying capacity and two points for every one of their boats. We can see they currently have one boat and they have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carrying capacity. So right now this is worth 12 points to them and it could potentially be worth more if they're able to find more boats or more resource carrying capacity. Now they're going to add this down into their area and they've decided just to put it right over here. Oops, no, that's not a river card. <laughs> It'll go right up there. In fact, I just realized our Cathedral is also not a river card. Sorry about that. Lastly, we have the blue player, and they've decided to put this Truffle Orchard down. Now, at the end of the game, this will be worth four points to them for every pair of pig and skill token that they put towards it. Okay, now we can shuffle up all of these cards, and then we can deal these out. Just like I said before, we are now going to have nine cards to go through in this final season of the game. And now let's jump right into the winter season by looking at this hand. Now, right off of the bat, there are just three of these village cards. We can bring these over here and see that this one right here is going to make every gold that we have that's not currently scoring anything worth two points. Now, normally gold is worth just one point, so that's certainly nice. Although, we also could just shunt our gold down here into this barn, and then that gold would be worth two points anyway. So, I don't think this is a high priority target for us. Next up, we have this windmill, and this simply allows you to turn five of any resource into five money. And if you upgrade this by getting rid of one skill, then five of any resource is worth uh, seven uh, points, that is. Uh, so that's a really good way to turn a lot of resources into points. But again, we already have a decent way of doing that down here with our barn. This up here is the Summer Feet, and this will get us points for the number of the yellow uh, keeples that we have within our storage area. And then the rest of these cards right here are going to be keeple cards. Now, I think maybe what we should do is just take this card right here. It's another one of these triple keeple cards. And if we have this, then our opponents don't. And they are less likely to grab that card, which gives tons of points for having three uh, these triple keeple cards. So we've been essentially planning all game around this, making it not very incentivized for our opponents to grab. So I think, yeah, let's go with that. We'll pick this card right here. And then when we look at the back of the card, you can see we're going to pass counterclockwise. So this will go over to our player on our right, which is green.
Now that we've all made our choices, we can flip these over, and now let's figure out where we actually want to send this triple keeple card. Well, I suppose right now our high priority target is activating our Wainwright multiple times. Uh, this gives us two upgrades, and currently we have one, two, three overall upgrades we want to do. But then every one of these that we flip over, we of course generate some more gold. So I think let's send this right over here, and now we have five resource movements. Now, in order to upgrade this well again, we need either a stone on here or a wood. We don't actually have any wood, and we have a gold on here already, so I figure let's take this stone and go one, two. So at that point, we are ready to finish upgrading our well right here, and we still have three movements left. And I figure, let's just take these two right here and move them down, and then we'll take this iron and then move that over. So we're kind of positioning it to head down here into the barn. Next up, we can do two upgrades, and I figure let's do this one right down here, and that's going to be our iron, our stone, and then the gold as if it was one of the wood. We can add that right there, and we just went from 10 to 20 points, so that's a 10-point jump. And then over here, let's start upgrading the cathedral. This spot right here is going to take three of any of the skill tokens, so we can get rid of all three of these, and now we just need two more of these to get the next one of these done. So we just went from three, uh, from five up to 12 points, so that was a 7-point jump there and a 10-point jump there, so 17 points overall just with upgrades here. At the same time, the green player was putting their cards out, and it looks like they picked a weaver. Now this is going to be endgame points, and it says that for every pair of the sheep and any resource that they put towards this, they will get two points. So they can add this down here to their river. And it's worth noting that they don't actually need these resources on the card itself. That only happens when you have the rounded edges with the area that you put the resources into. At the same time up here, the blue player decided to play this Keeple card. It has a uh, pig on it, and we know that they really want pigs now. And they've decided to put this over here to their mason. Now that this is upgraded, they can get rid of one of these axes, and that will turn it into three gold. These will go down onto the mason card itself. And now we can move on by looking at the eight cards that just got passed to us. Now, it looks like there are a couple of these village cards, so let's take a look at these first. Uh, now, the first thing to point out is the one that we really wanted popped out. Uh, this is worth three points at the end of the game for every one of these triple meeple cards, and we have five in here and one out there. So, already, this is worth 18 points to us, so I'm uh, very interested in taking this. Uh, this Sea Bastion right here is going to be worth points based off of the number of pigs that you send over to it. Four to six pigs gives 10 points, and seven or more pigs gives 20 points. And then this Merchant is really similar to the one that we kind of saw all game long. This one has to do with wood. Every two wood you put towards it is worth three points, and every one of these saws that you put towards it is worth three. Now, either way, I think this is a pretty uh, simple decision turn for us. Uh, we could take this one right now, or I guess we could take one of these Keeple cards here. Uh, there is another one of the triples, and we could hope that this will run around the board uh, back to us. Uh, at this point, we've taken so many of these cards that we're kind of assuming our opponents won't be gathering them, and they don't necessarily uh, realize, uh, probably at this point, how many we've been taking. It's possible, I guess, if they're paying attention that this is worth a ton of points to us now, and maybe they would just grab it just to stop us uh, from being able to gain access to it, and they could turn it into a Keeble token. Uh, this is definitely one of the decisions we have to weigh, and I suppose we probably shouldn't push it too much. It's possible we'll have access to this one later on, so let's lock this down. So we'll put the Apothecary here, and then once we have all picked, we can reveal these. Uh, we're going to show the Apothecary to everybody, and they're not too surprised to see that. And I figure, let's just add this one over here next to our Cathedral. Down here, the green player has revealed the jeweler, and we're not too surprised to see that. They currently have 10 gold right now, so every one of those is now worth two points to them at the end of the game instead of the usual one, and they have ways to easily make even more gold. So they're just going to add this right over here. And then lastly, the blue player will reveal this Mercer's Guild. Now this is going to give them five points for every set of iron, stone, and wood that they put towards it. And they have the ability to make uh, iron, stone, and wood just by activating their workshop. So effectively, they get five points every time they activate their workshop for the rest of the game. They really like the look of that, and they've decided to take this scoring card, and they'll just put it right down over here next to the hiring fair. All right, we can now pick up these cards and choose one of them. In this case, uh, we've been seeing the store all game long. We knew this one was uh, in circulation. Uh, over here, this one is going to give points for a cow and one of the uh, keeple tokens, five points for that pair. And then, of course, carried away, we knew about this one, and we also knew about the key market. So uh, all of these, uh, most of these anyway, that are uh, in our hand were ones that we kind of knew were uh, in play for the whole game. And at this point, ooh, there is another one of these triple cards. 
Now, if we play this, that is guaranteed to be worth three extra points to us. And then, of course, we will get some uh, extra activations out of it. And I think this is probably the most important card in our hand. I suppose this carried away is pretty good as well. That's worth 10 points if we have three to four cows. And we have one cow here, and I believe we had two other cows in here. So I suppose if we took this, then that would be a guaranteed 10 points, and this would be a guaranteed 3 points, plus some extra activations. Now, I guess maybe we should just grab this. Uh, if we're able to get a couple more cows, which uh, do exist, they are uh, in circulation to a certain extent, uh, then maybe we could get even more points for it. And perhaps this is us getting a little bit greedy. I do want to make sure that we can actually activate these things and uh, fill up our barn and, you know, finish out our cathedral and everything. But we still have a lot of rounds left, and there's a lot of these key uh, cards. So, yeah, let's go with the carried away. Okay, once we've all made our picks, we can reveal these, and I suppose we are also potentially denying points to uh, the green player because they want these boats. They get extra two points for each one of those, so we are taking this, and they are not going to be able to have access to it anymore. They obviously picked something else last time this was around, and I figure let's just add this right over here into our village. Down here, the green player decided to play this card, and they're going to send it over to the blue player. Once they get here, they want to activate the workshop to make an iron, a stone, and a wood. And then all three will get added onto the green player's home tile. Next up, we have the blue player, and they've decided to place this single keeple card with a pig down, and they're going to put it onto their hiring fair. Once here, they're going to get rid of this anvil, and that will allow them the ability to take three more random skills. And it looks like they have found one of each. Okay, let's keep moving on, and at this point, it looks like we have six cards left in our hand. Now, these are going to be some that we've seen already, and I don't think we're particularly interested in either of these scoring cards. I think we are more interested in activating some of the areas that we have in our village to try and maximize the cards that we have already. Now, at this point, none of these, unfortunately, have the uh, triple on it, but this one does have a cow, and it can go towards ourselves. So I think let's pick this card here, and we can uh, try to work towards getting the maximum amount of points from Carried Away. All right, we've all picked, so now we can reveal and activate these cards. And I think the most important thing we have to activate right now is this alehouse. The reason for that is because we will get one of these keeple tokens, and we might be able to use these for extra actions in the end to uh, create some more resources and shuffle them down here into the barn. Now, that also is going to allow us to get one random skill tile, and we don't care what it is. In this case, it looks like it is a pickaxe, and we just need one more to finish up the upgrades on our cathedral, and then maybe we could do the Wainwright a couple times to start flipping things over like crazy and getting the most points we can out of these cards. Down here, the green player picked out this card, and that is going to get them one keeple token, and then they obviously have to activate something in our area because we are to the left. When we come back here, it is worth noting that they could go to the alehouse, even though there's already one card, because these would have activated it at the same time, but instead they've decided to head over to the key mine, and that will generate three iron for them. These will get added down onto their home card right here. And then, of course, the blue player is also putting their cards down, and they chose this card with the cow on it specifically to stop us from having access to more cows, and they're going to put this one down onto their farrier. Now, this is going to give them five resource movements and then one upgrade, and for these movements, they will go one, two, three, and then four. At this point, you can see they have five gold and four of the stone on this spot, so they'll use their last one to bring another stone over here, and they now have five stone and five gold, which means they have five of these pairs for five points each for each pair. Now, they decided a little while ago to kind of invest here and just use the gold for this because they don't really have a great way to make a lot of the iron and get it over here for this upgrade. So they're kind of committing to this, even though um, they would get one point for each, uh, for each gold if they did not use it here. But this is kind of their plan for the moment. And now, of course, they do get one upgrade, and they're just going to flip this tile over for a point. All right, let's keep on moving, and it looks like we have five cards to choose from now. Uh, when we look at them, two of these are village cards. This one gives points for loose wood, and we don't really have that going on right now. And this one gives points for pigs. Now, we have two pigs right here on this card, and I think we have at least one over here, but I'm not sure if this is actually going to be good enough. It appears that the blue player is trying to draft as many pigs as they can. They've already taken two this round, and I'm not really confident we'll get to the scoring position on this. So instead, I figure let's pick from these right here, and this one is worth three points to us with our apothecary. So I think that is a pretty solid decision. Let's go ahead and pick this. 
And then once we've all picked, we can start revealing these and we will show our triple keeple card. And with this, I figure let's activate the Ale House again. Uh, there was just one card on there, so three keeples is enough to play on top of it. And that's going to get us another one of these keeple tokens. And more importantly, that's going to get us another random skill tile. Now that is going to be another pickaxe, and we now have three of these tiles, and that is what we needed to make the last upgrade on the cathedral happen. Next up, we have the green player, and they've decided to place this card with a sheep on it over into our area. We see that there are two keeples on this card, which means it can go on top of either here or here, and they've decided to activate the key mine once again. Uh, we haven't actually activated this ourselves in a while. It seems like the green player keeps hitting this, and they will take three more iron. And these will get added on to their increasingly crowded home card right here. Now, you may be wondering why they are hoarding, and it really has to do with this weaver. Uh, they have a ton of sheep, and I think they have a bunch of sheep in here as well. And they are trying to pair every sheep up with one of any resource. Every time they do that, they get essentially two more points. So considering they already had all of these sheep, they are effectively getting six points with these three resources they just got. And they have already done that three times in winter. Lastly, up here, the blue player decided they want to play this dairy. Now, they're going to add that right over here onto their riverfront, and that gives them one cow, and it allows them the ability to spend a cow and one of these keeple tokens to get five points each for the pair. All right, we can now pick up these cards, and it looks like there is one of these triple keeple cards in it. Uh, there are a couple village cards as well. Uh, this one we know is worth 10 points to us because we had uh, five of these green keeples. So this would be a three-point card, and this would be a 10-point card. Now, obviously, 10 points sounds bigger, and I like the idea, of course, of activating our own stuff. We could use this on our key mine before we lose the option to use it anymore, uh, or we could, of course, use this down here on our Wainwright. We know that we need to activate our Wainwright again before the end of the round, although I suppose we could likely do that on the next turn. Uh, for now, it's possible that our opponents might end up grabbing this one because it's a decent amount of points, but I also really don't want to run out of overall turns. We only have four turns left. If we did this right now, we'd have three turns left. One of those turns would need to be over here. Another turn would, uh, sorry, over here. Another turn would probably want to be the key mine, and we probably want to do that before we actually transfer this so we can move those resources down. I think all of that means maybe we should not wait on this. Yeah, let's go with this card here. And then now that we have all picked, we can start revealing these, and we decided we wanted to send this one over here onto our key mine while we actually had the option to. It definitely seemed to me that the green player was intent on uh, sapping out this mine and probably also the workshop from the blue player. So getting in here while we could is likely a good idea. And then we can turn these irons into points by sending them down to the barn when we do our inevitable upgrade action. Down here, the green player decided they want to play this card out. That's going to give them one keeple token. And then after that, they're going to put this onto their builder. That's going to give them the ability to get two movement, and they will move, I'm sorry, three movement, and they will move this right over here. This gold will head right over there, and then with the last movement, well, they don't really see anything they necessarily need to move. They're feeling pretty good about everything, so they're going to forego that last movement and then start upgrading. Over here, they will spend this gold and this wood, because again, that upgrade is essentially white resources. Uh, they didn't like the idea of having to use this gold right here, but the rest of the resources were just so far away, and they know they don't have that many turns left. So uh, they effectively got rid of two points, because this uh, jeweler would have made that worth two points. But by getting rid of these, they can now upgrade the spot, and they went from 7 up to 15, which is an 8-point jump. So realistically, that was a 6-point turn there, but then they also get another upgrade. Now at this point, all they have left to do is to flip something over so they can flip this over, and that is now a 7-point turn, which they're feeling pretty good about. Up here, the blue player decided they want to play the single keeple card, and they're going to put this down onto their brewer. Once they land there, they're going to get rid of one of their skills, and that will generate them one keeple token and two more gold, which will go down on the brewer. Okay, we can now move on, and we have three cards left, and only one of them is a keeple card. Now, this was the turn that I was hoping we could activate our Wayne right here, but this card does not have an arrow pointing down. That means this has to be played on the green player's area, or we could play these two cards here. Uh, the Summer Feet gives us points for our yellow keeples, but remember, we are already going to be getting points for the triple um, keeple cards, and some of those might be yellow. So I don't think this will actually be worth that many points, and this obviously is a way to get a lot of points for just having a variety of resources, but I think this is probably still the best thing for us to do. So let's choose this card here. And then once we've all picked out, we can flip these over, and we know that we have to send this down to the green player's area. 
and I figure the best thing we can do is head over to their home. Now this is going to get us one of these Keeple tokens, and then we could do three resource movement and one upgrade. And with that upgrade, I figure we'll get rid of all three of these skills, and that lets us go from 12 up to 20 points over here on the Cathedral. So we're doing really well with both of these uh, resource dump cards. Now we also get the three movements, so I figure we'll take three iron and just move those down here into the barn. And then down here, the green player is going to play this double keeple card, and they're going to play it into the blue player's area. Once we arrive here, they're going to activate the workshop, and that's going to make one of each of the main resources, which they can then add to their very crowded home card. At the same time all of that was happening, the blue player decided to play this card. That's going to go down into their own village, and they're going to use the keeple token that comes with this card to immediately uh, make this into a three, and that will allow them the ability to go right down on top of their own workshop. Next up, that's going to generate a stone, a wood, and an iron. And then we all have just two cards left over. So in this case, it looks like neither of them are Keeble cards, which um, is a little bit of a bummer. I guess we've been playing a lot of those recently right now. Uh, this one right here would get us points for our pigs. And like I said, I think last time this came around, we have a couple pigs over here and maybe a pig or two in here. But I'm not sure if we're actually going to get to the four point threshold. That being said, this currently is worth no points to us at all, so I figure maybe let's just go with the Sea Bastion. I guess another option is we could simply discard this to get another Keeple token, and then use those to try and uh, move a little bit more resources around here, or maybe generate resources, although unfortunately, our main resource generation spot over here is already tapped out. We cannot hit this anymore, so I'm not really sure what the right thing to do is. Perhaps we could just take this Merchant, and then hope to use the Alehouse to run into to one of these saws right here. Now, either way, neither of these options are particularly good for us right now. So I figure let's just go ahead and get rid of this merchant. We'll send this back into the box and that's just gonna get us one Keeble token and then we can pass this along. Once everybody else has made their selection, they can start flipping these over. Of course, we already did by discarding our card to take one of these Keeble tokens. Down here, the green player has taken this card, which will give them one point for every one of their yellow Keeples within their storage. And this comes with three sheep. So they can add this down into their area. And then up here, the blue player decided they were going to take the key market. So this is the one that gives points for those green keeples. Uh, we were hoping to see this one again, but it looks like it did get nabbed. And I guess that's not too surprising. And the blue player decides they'll just fill this hole in right over there. All right, we've reached the final action of the game, and in this case, we have the store. Now, this gives points for pairs of iron, but we already have pretty much all of our iron down here in this uh, barn here. So I think let's just plan on discarding this one for another one of these tokens here, and hopefully we can get some good actions with those tokens on the very end. Uh, either way, I don't think this is going to generate us any points, so we may as well do the discard. I suppose there's no reason to wait around. Let's go ahead and do that now. And then down here, the green player will also discard their card for one of these Keeple tokens. And lastly, the blue player is going to do the same thing. At this point, the winter season is coming to a close, but before we end it, we can start using these Keeple tokens here. Now, I figure let's use this on our home, and that will give us three movement, and then, of course, we also get one upgrade. Now, realistically, we only need one movement, uh, although I suppose this is currently worth one point, but if we bring it down here, it's worth two points. So we'll do a second movement there, and I guess we'll bring this one over here for the third movement, and then for this upgrade, let's go ahead and flip this over to the one side, and since we flipped, that means we will generate one gold, and we can put that down onto the well. Next up, we still have four of these tokens, so we can spend this one right up here, because remember, each one of these tokens effectively acts as a double keeple card. So this is one card, and that means this double is enough to cover it up, and that means we can do three more movement. So we could go one, two, three, and we're just shunting everything we can into the barn. And then, of course, we get one upgrade, so we can flip this over, and the flipper will come into play, getting us one gold. And now we can spend two of these, because this is effectively a four keeple card by putting these together right up here, and that is going to be the third and final activation, because, again, each card cannot be activated uh, more than three separate times. So once this happens, we can do three more movement. We can bring this down for one, that for two, and then this for three. So our barn is just overloaded here. And then, of course, we get one more upgrade flip, and I figure we'll flip this one over here. And lastly, we have one more token, so I figure let's send it right over here to our Wainwright. That gives us five movements, so we can go one, two, three, and we don't have any more that we need to do. And then we have two more flips, but realistically, only one more thing is flippable, so we can send that over right here. And of course, that will generate another gold. 
Now I just realized when we flipped this over, we forgot to activate our flipper, so we should have one more gold there, and I suppose we could have used our last two movement to bring it like this, but it would not be able to get all the way down over here to the barn, and with that, we have finished out using our tokens, so we can now discard all of these, and then of course all of our uh, keeple cards here can go into our storage. At the same time we are activating our tokens, the green player was also going. They're going to use one of these on their gold mine, and that will generate two gold. They will use another one on this gold mine, generating two more gold. And then lastly, they have two more of these tokens, so just like we did, they can do a third and final activation on the gold mine, which will bring two more gold in just like that. That finishes out all of their tokens, so they can discard all of these, and then of course their cards will go into storage. This brings us lastly to the blue player, and they have three of these keeple tokens, but they've decided they don't want to use these. Instead, they'd rather save them for victory points over here with their dairy, so that's going to finish out their activations. Okay, winter has officially passed, and this means we have come to the end of the game. At this point, all of us can start adding up all of our victory points, and that's effectively going to be all of the coins that are face up in our area, and many of those coins will be generated based off of the cards that we have here in our storage. Well, I figured the best thing we can do is just work our way through these cards, so we can start over here with Carried Away. Now we can see we have one cow, which can go over here towards this boat, and then if we look here, we've got one, and then we have some more in here. Here's another one, and then there is another one. So we effectively have one, two, three, four cows. Now we can see here that if we have three or four cows, that's 10 points, and we're not going to get points for any of these other cards, because again, every card can only go towards one scoring condition. So in that case, it looks like we are currently at 10 points here. We can now move on, and this barn right here is going to be worth two points for every resource that's on it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means we have 30 points worth of tokens on here, and then another point for this upgraded, uh, flipped upgrade right here. Moving on, we have the well, and this is going to be worth 20 plus 1 plus 1, so that's 22 points here. And then this alehouse is going to be worth 1, 2. This key mine is also worth 2, and then this home is worth 1, 2, 3, 4. The Wainwright is worth 3 plus 1, or 4, and then this Cathedral is worth 20 plus 2, or 22. And lastly, we have the Apothecary, and this is going to be worth 3 points for every one of those triple keeple cards that we send over towards this. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we made a very concerted effort all game long to try and take as many of these as we could, and that will be 8 times 3, or 24 points, just for this one card. Now there's one last thing we can score points for, and that's going to be the gold that is not scoring for anything else. So we have this one here and that one there, so that's one, two extra points. Once we add all of those points up, it looks like we have an endgame score of 122. Next up, we can score the points for the green player, and the first thing they get points for is one point for every yellow keeple that they have in their hand. Now, if we look through here, they've got a decent number of them. Of course, they do also have some sheep on some of these. Now, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they've decided that they're not actually going to worry about these uh, sheep. They have lots of sheep coming from other things, so this is going to be eight points coming towards them for the summer feet. Moving on, we can see this weaver is going to be worth two points for every resource they put towards their sheep, so every sheep resource combo. Now, as far as sheep are concerned, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then within their hand, they still have, it looks like, uh, 11, 12, and then a 13th one right here. So they can put both of these cards towards this scoring condition, and if we look over to the resources that they have that are not gold, because they want to score their gold differently, we can see they have 1, 2, 3, times 4, or 12. So they don't actually need this card right here, they just need this one to get up to those 12 sheep to match the 12 resources, and that means they have this 12 times, and that means this is a 24-point scoring card. So they can add this right under here, and then moving on, this jeweler is going to make all of their gold worth two points. Now they currently have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So they have 30 points in gold just from their jeweler here, and then moving on, they get one point for their peddler. Next up, they have their home card, and that's going to be worth three points, and their gold mine is worth three points because they've already scored all of this gold here. The builder is worth one plus one for this flipped upgrade. This woodcutter is worth three plus one or four for that flipped upgrade. They've already scored these uh, gold right down here, so they can move over to the goldsmith. Now, this is going to be worth 15 plus one or 16 points, and finally, they will get one point for every carrying capacity they have and two points per boat for this traveler's lodge. 
they have one boat, so that's two points there. And then as far as movement, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus four is ten. So this is a 12-point scoring card. And then when we add all of that up, it looks like they have a final score of 103. Lastly, we can come up here and score the blue player, and the first thing they will get is five points for every one of these uh, keeple tokens matched up with a cow. Now they have one, two cows showing right here, and then if we look through here, they have another cow, so they can just use this. Uh, if they have more cows, it doesn't really help them out because, again, they need the keeple tokens to match up. So right here, they have 15 points for this. Moving on with this truffle orchard, they will get four points for every pair of pig plus the skill tokens over here. Now they have five skill tokens, and as far as pigs are concerned, they have one, two out here. So then they have a third, and then that's a fourth one, and then here is a fifth one. So they were able to match all of those up, and they can take all of these tokens, and then just add them right over here to match that up. And that means they have just generated five times four, or 20 points for this truffle orchard. Moving on, we can see here this key market is going to give them two points for every one of their green keeples that are showing up within here. Now, let's just take a quick check and make sure they didn't get rid of any of the greens, and they didn't. So looking back over here, they have, it looks like, one, two, three, four, five. So when they discard all of these, that's going to be five times two, or ten points for this key market. And then moving on here, the stone yard is going to give them five points for every pair of stone and gold. So it appears they have one two, three, four, five pairs. So that's going to be five times five or 25 points right here for the stone yard. And then moving up here, this mason is going to be worth five points to them. This brewer is worth, well, I guess just one, two, three for the gold that's hanging out here. And then this home is going to be worth nothing because they never actually upgraded it. Moving on, this workshop is worth one. This farrier right here is worth three. And then this hiring fair is worth just one for this flipped over upgrade tile. Lastly, the Mercer's Guild will give them five points for every set of stone, iron, and wood, and they were expecting to do this a lot more often in the winter, but unfortunately, the green player was able to get in there early and get there before they could, so they only got one set of these, so this is just worth five points, unfortunately. And unfortunately, when you add all of that up, they only have a score of 88. This means that once the dust has settled, we came out with a pretty strong first place finish. Green is going to come in second, and blue comes in third, and that finishes our full three-player game of Keyflow. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. It seems like we had a pretty solid win right there at the end. Uh, it was about halfway through winter when I started to really realize that us as the uh, red player were doing much better than both of our opponents. I think that overall we played the game pretty well, but I do think there were maybe a couple key moments where our opponents maybe stumbled strategically, which really caused us to get a lot of uh, big uh, benefits. In particular, there was a moment where the green player decided to take a card instead of taking the well. Now, the well was the thing that we were able to use that we were able to upgrade a couple times by using one of each of the three different types of resources, and we got a bunch of points out of that, mostly because, uh, well, the well itself was worth 20 points at the end of the game, but then we got extra points from the gold we got from flipping over, and then we used that gold to do further upgrades on that tile. So it was a really good card for us, and I think the green player kind of undervalued it. Maybe they should have kept it, and they would have had a decent shot of being able to fill it out. Of course, at that point, they already had a gold mine, which they were trying to invest resources into filling out, but I think there was probably probably ways they could have made that work, and if they'd done that, then we would have had a much harder time uh, getting to the eventual score that we ended up getting to. Now, I thought that the blue player was doing quite well. It seemed like they had some uh, pretty cool combos and synergies going on, but then I was surprised to see them with the lowest score out of all of us. It seems like they had some really high scoring cards in front of them, but I think they maybe built out their village a little bit too big, and some of their combos required too many actu activations with those keeple cards in order to really pull off the uh, resulting victory points. I think that um, they had a lot of good ways to make points, they just were not as efficient at getting there from an action perspective as, say, we were with our somewhat dominant score as we came in uh, first place in the game. So I think at this point that's going to wrap up all my thoughts on this one. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.